welcome. This is the second Pimera project video. Pimera is a software application I'm creating so that I can use Raspberry Pi computers as security cameras and critter cameras. It will run on Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s for now using the Raspberry Pi camera modules. In this video I'll show the code for the basic, for a basic lib camera app. I'll share the code via GitHub when this video is published. Feel free to use the scaffold and create your own libcamera apps. All right. So right now I'm developing on a Raspberry Pi 3B+. It's running PyOS with the Debian bus Buster, which is a Debian 11. And I'll walk through the code to set up the camera and get frames via a callback. That's really basically all the code will do. But I'll show you a few things that will be helpful. We'll cover the make file so you can see what I'm using to compile and how. Uh, what libraries you will need to install as far as packages on your system. And then you can find the code there once this video is published. All right. So it's based like my scaffold. The code is based on the Loop Camera Application Developer Guide. You can find it in their Git repo under the documentation folder, in the guides subfolder, and then it's application developer RST, which I'm going to show you now. All right. Give me just a minute as I move my other window down. Okay. So again, I'm going from this guide, and they split up the code in this guide, which was nice. Um, but then I had to copy it out. I didn't find any uh, other file where all the code was in one place. So I copied it out and I had to tweak some things. And I think they've actually updated the guide to fix some bugs that were in an old version, which is great. So they are on top of things. Okay. First of all, we include some... Here's my code over here. And let me make so you can see that it does build and actually I'll show you the output too so you see what we're looking at and this is standard information that's printed out by default by the lib camera library and uh, I'm allocating 10 buffers for the stream and part of my code sleeps and then counts how many frames it saw within that second so what I wanted was 30 frames per second, and these are 1080p frames, and it seems to be that's what I'm getting. First one, of course, is, a, is um, lower because the way I'm doing sleep, I'm actually looking just for a second change. So I started the app here within a second, and then the next second started, and within that start to next second time, we only saw 13 frames, but the subsequent second we saw 30 frames, which is fine. Okay, let's put that back down. So the guide actually walks you through pretty much all the bits of code that you need. Um, and I may or may not have done it in the exact order that they presented it. I think I actually tried to put everything in main just so it's all in one place. Um, there is a camera global. And I believe that's my only global, aside from my frame counting uh, variables. So they talk you through the start, what the camera manager does, how to create and acquire it, how to configure it, how to set settings, and then you have to validate those settings. And uh, the library may fix some of the settings, so you can kind of tell what it what it did. You can catch those uh, return codes if you want to. And there's frame buffer allocation. Um, by default, this the, the default allocator works just fine for a scaffold app. If you need to allocate a lot of frame buffers, like I think I want to do for the actual Pimera application, you know, I'll need to make my own allocator, which I'll cross that bridge when I get there. And then it talks about how to do the frame capture. This library is a little, little um, 
bit of a surprise on how you do it. You create requests and then you add them to the camera and the camera, the library behind the scenes processes those requests and then you know, re returns them to your request complete callback when it has a, a frame of data. So it's not like you just pull the camera or you, um, you have to actually ask for frames is what I'm getting at. Okay, and then some request statuses. It talks about how to um, walk, get the buffers out of the request that had completed. And I actually do this in my actual Pimera code. Let's see, queuing, event processing, cleaning up and stopping. I don't actually think I clean up and stop very well. No, I don't. That's, <laughs> that's one thing I need to add here, a graceful shutdown. Yeah, yeah, right here. So uh, removing a media device while still in use. Yeah, I didn't add the shutdown code. Sorry about that. Cool. That's something I will do. All right, let's just go through my code now that I showed you the docs. Uh, here's the request complete callback when Pimera, or when <laughs> libcamera gets a frame. It calls this with the request object. I'm not sure what, like how this would happen, where the request was canceled. Maybe on shutdown, you cancel all in flight requests, and somehow you can, the library will tag it with that status, perhaps. Not sure, but that's a, that's a hunch. Um, so here is where, if I were going to do something with the buffers that I got back with the frame data, I now have a handle to the buffers. Within the buffer is, this is a map, so stream to frame buffer. So I only have one stream right now, but I can loop over um, this map. And the, there's only one stream. It'll be my video, video stream. And then I can uh, get access to the frame buffer for that stream. And then within the buffer, actually, let me um, see if I can show you the, oh, right, this page does some weird things when you have it not full screen. Let me see if I can do this for now. I think it's here. Okay. Yeah, eventually you can, not eventually, you can get here. And then you can see all the classes that are in use that are available within the lib camera library. This is, we were talking about frame buffers, and then it has a vector of planes. And the planes represent, you know, depending on your format that you requested from the camera, they may represent red, green, blue, or some other YUV planes. All right. Actually, I don't think I need to. I'll just leave that here, okay. So again, that's how you get to the buffer map and the frame buffer data. Then you can loop over the planes if you need to or get access to an individual plane if you know what you're dealing with, which you should if you're writing an app. Um, here's how you reuse a buffer so you don't have to reallocate memory or um, if you want to just keep getting data. Like say, say you don't want your app to stop after it uh, fulfills 10 frame requests. You can flag it for reuse and say, yes, reuse the buffers too, so we don't have to reallocate. And then you queue it on the camera queue, and the camera will reuse that buffer in that uh, request when it needs to send you more data. Not the camera, but lib camera. This is just my code for counting how many frames I've seen within a second. So I'm just getting the clock real-time clock, seeing if the previous seconds are different from the timestamps new second value, and then incrementing frames, and if it's different, we print out how many frames we saw within the last second. That's all that does. That just makes sure that helps me verify my frame rate. Give me a minute while I get some water.
Okay, the main function. Just like the docs say, we start a camera manager. And we start it. We make sure that there are cameras. We get the first one, get the ID, then get a handle to it. Then we acquire it. There is a flowchart um, somewhere within their documentation on, I think it's actually in here, which is pretty handy. I think it's probably in the camera state. Give me just one second. I just wanted to show you it because it's helpful to reason about. Okay, never mind. It's in here somewhere that tells you when you can do certain operations um, and uh, what what operations are allowed, when you should configure, that sort of thing. So it's it's pretty helpful. Here we go. Okay, states. So we acquire it right here. It goes to the acquired state, and then we can configure it, or we can release it. So we can configure it. And then if we want to start it, we actually have to trigger start. And then we can create requests and queue requests. Those are the only things we can do. We can't reconfigure while it's running. That sort of thing. So then you have to stop. And then you can, and then, uh, let's see, stopping. And then it goes back to configured. OK, that's good to know. And then you can reconfigure it. So if I were to catch a signal to reread a configuration file, that's how I would do it. I'd catch the signal, which would stop the camera. Once it's actually stopped, I can load the configuration and reconfigure the camera and then start it again. All right. So we're generating a configuration for the video recording stream role. I don't know a whole lot about these, but this is um, the code that I ran with. Let me see what the actual developer guide does. I believe it does a viewfinder role, which is, I think, the preview. I think that's what it what it does by default. But I wanted to actually set it up for video recording so I could get continuous frames at a high frame rate. OK, we generate a config. We get a handle to it. And then we start to configure it. In this scaffold, I'm actually using BGR888, which is 24 bytes per pixel. 20, 24 bits per pixel. And it looks like I was using 1640 by 922 resolution. And I was asking it to make 10 buffers for me using the allocator behind the scenes. Okay. And this is, you'll need to, you may or may not need to adjust this based on what you're doing with those requests and those buffers, how long it takes you to process them. You'll may need more in the queue for the camera to use. That's why I talked, actually I don't think I talked about it in the video yet, but um, it defaults to 4. You can't raise it very high. I tried raising it to 20 and I ran out of uh, memory. It, there's, it uses some memory space that's pretty limited, so uh, for Pimera, I actually want more than that. I probably want closer to like 100 frame, uh, buffers, so I'll need to allocate those myself figure out how to do that. That way I can delay processing these requests and buffers as long as I want. Well, not as long as I want, maybe up to a one or two seconds. Because uh, what I don't want for my application is to have to copy a bunch of data. But that's a digression, sorry. Or, yeah. Okay, and here's where you, you know, we set the configuration, we validate it, we see whether it's invalid, you see whether Loop Camera adjusted it for us. If it detects some values that it can't do or needs to tweak it based on, who knows, it'll let you know whether it adjusted it. And then you get the configuration and you pass it to the camera and actually configure the camera with it. Here's where we are using the default frame buffer allocator and per each stream configured in our configuration, we will allocate based on that stream's configuration. So this one, we made a video recording configuration, but we could have a still configuration as well. And it may have 
meet different buffer needs. So the still stream or the still uh, roll may allocate buffers differently. And the strange thing about this, if you set this very high, like to 20, it won't be able to allocate that many. It will complain in the terminal and this return value will not tell you anything. It will it will happily go along its way. <laughs> if it can't, I think it must do like a uh, like a lazy allocation and, and libcamera doesn't know immediately that the allocation failed. So just beware. All right, once we get the return value from the allocator, I'm just printing the size of what we allocated. How many buffers, sorry, how many buffers we allocated for the stream. All right, now we get the stream itself and the buffers and we'll get, let's see, this is gonna be a pointer to request. Actually, this is a vector of requests, request pointers. Okay, what we're doing here is making a request, getting one of the buffers that were allocated, adding the buffer to the request for a given stream. We only have one stream right now. And then we're adding them to our vector. Actually, we're moving, this is smart pointer stuff, we're moving them to our vector of requests. That way the ownership gets moved, so we're moving a request. Otherwise, the ownership would be in here and when this loop ends, all these things would be automatically deallocated and freed. So we want to move, I don't know what the right term is in C++, but move the ownership of that object out to the vector so it doesn't get freed. And so here's how we're hooking up our request complete callback. And this is how you set frame rates. Um, Let's see here. So there are there's this frame duration limits control that you can set. And my frame rate is 30. But that means you have to tell it the duration that you want it to wait while it's capturing a frame. So you do some math to figure that out in microseconds, the min and max time. So I want it to always wait that amount of time. And that will result in 30 frames per second. I'm not sure what it'll do if you do the minimum lower. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be less noise, more noise. I have no idea. And then you start it. You start the camera, pass it the controls that we, uh, yes, the ones we just configured for the frame rate. And then we can queue the requests. Again, that, that uh, flow chart tells us when we can queue requests after the camera has started. And now I'm sleeping for 10 seconds. And that's pretty much it. Every second, I print sleeping, sleep for a second, and I do that 10 times. And whenever the camera has a frame, it triggers my request complete callback. And then we get a count of how many frames we've seen each second. That's the basics. There is Again, I have to add the graceful shutdown code, which is at the bottom of the guide. But you can do that. And I think that's it for now. I hope that was helpful. This video went a lot longer than I intended. But thank you for watching. See you next time. Actually, next time, I'm going to start walking through my code for Pimera. So you can see how I'm using libcamera and the JPEG library for right now. Um, yeah, uh, I want to tease this, go through that code, so then I can get back to the porting effort and really start building out or porting over my uh, motion detection logic and all the other threads processing stuff. All right, see you next time.